hello guys hello friends hello jesus your boy again falling with a star so guys in our previous video we talked about uh bone the cells and we talk about short bones and stuff so now we are going to look at the microscopic difference between what compact bone and what spongy bone so let's take this long bone here it is being cut longitudinally so this is the medullary what cavity so let's take a section of what this long bone and look at it here so this is a section this is the microscopic structure of what the bone the whole of this represents what the compact bone so from here to here the whole of this represents what the compact bone and from here to here represents what the spongy bone so now let's look at what the compact bone this compact bone is further being lined by this structure called what the periosteum and one thing about periosteum is that it is double layered it contains the outer fibrous layer and an inner osteogenic layer and the inner osteogenic layer is being lined by what the osteogenic cells that we talked about so the compact bone is being lined by what this what periosteum so this bone tissue they are being arranged in layers and the word for the layer is called lamellae lamellae so when you hear lamellae we are talking about layers and we have so many different types of layers you see these layers they are being arranged in a circular manner so we call them the concentric what lamellae so this is the concentric what lamellae circular structure circular shaped you understand so we call them the the concentric what lamellae and within the concentric lamellae there is this black things here called the what the central canal some people also call it the Havasian what canal and within the central canal you can find veins arteries and also nerves you understand also let's look at the, the let's take the topmost part and look at it here we also have this type of layers they actually line the circumference of what the bone you see the line what the circumference of the bone so these layers because the line the circumference of the bone we call them the circumferential what lamellae the circumferential what lamellae and we, between the concentric lamellae we have these layers and these layers are called the interstitial what the interstitial what lamellae so we have three types of lamellae we have the concentric lamellae this is the concentric lamellae and we have the circumferential lamellae this is the circumferential lamellae and we have the interstitial lamellae which is between what the concentric what lamellae you understand so this lamellae especially the concentric lamellae together with what the central canal comes together to form what the functional bone unit the functional bone unit called what the osteon the osteon is the what the bone functional unit let me say it in that way the bone what functional what unit so when you look at the concentric lamellae it is not actually totally circular there is these holes here and these holes is what we call the lacunae these holes they are called the lacunae or the lacuna you understand and this lacunae they actually house the bone cells the mature bone cells called what the osteocyte so within the lacunae you can see what the blue things here they represent what the osteocyte so within the lacunae you can find this what osteocyte but the lacunae they are not actually totally circular they have these extensions which we call the canaliculi the canaliculi this canaliculi you see the osteocyte we said that they have these extensions we call the filipodia so this canaliculi also house what the filipodia which is the extensions of what the osteocyte so this canaliculi helps the filipodia to attach the filipodia of what other what osteocytes you understand so that is for what the compact bone so that's for the compact bone and also let me say this you see we have this central canal which is also called the Havasian canal perpendicular to this central canal is what the perforating Volkmann's canal perforating Volkmann's what canal it also has blood vessels and it is perpendicular to what this central canal so now that's for the compact bone let's move towards the spongy bone for the spongy bone unlike the compact bone they don't contain this what osteons you understand they rather have this trabecular so this is the trabecular you see those line lines here they are the trabecular and they are irregularly being arranged and within them are spaces that makes what the spongy bone porous you understand so ladies and gentlemen that's for what the microscopic what difference between what the spongy bone and what the compact bone so now let's move to what bone development hello guys so guys let's look at this topic here 
called bone development, how bones are being formed. And there are two ways through which bones can be formed. The first one is intramembranous what ossification and the second one is endochondral what ossification. Let's look at the intramembranous what ossification first. For the intramembranous ossification, this is actually being taking place during fetal development. During what fetal development? Let me write here. Fetal development. And this also occur in a certain connective tissue we call fibrous connective tissue. Let me write here, fibrous connective tissue. So this intramembranous ossification results in the formation of bones like flat bones, mandible, and clavicle. So now the question is, what are the stages of what intramembranous ossification? So let's look at the stages of what intramembranous ossification. So in the fibrous connective tissue, we have these stem cells called mesenchyma stem cells and these stem cells will come together they will come together and aggregate after the aggregation they will multiply through mitosis after sufficient multiplication they will differentiate into another type of bone cell called what osteoblast so after they come together and undergo mitosis and uh, and multiply they then differentiate into this bone cell called what osteoblast and we all know what the osteoblast what they do they secrete what an uncalcified matrix and i said that that uncalcified matrix is called what osteoid so this is an uncalcified uh, bone matrix so this uncalcified bone matrix will become what calcified by the deposition of what calcium and what inorganic phosphates so by the deposition of calcium and inorganic phosphate, this uncalcified matrix will become what calcified. After the calcification of what the bone matrix, the osteoblast will become what trapped in the what in the bone matrix and then differentiate further into another type of bone cell called what the osteocyte. The osteocyte. So after the bone matrix has become calcified or hardened, the osteoblast will then differentiate further to form what osteocytes. You understand and this where the osteocytes where they sit the spaces that houses these osteocytes we call that space is what lacuna lacuna you understand and this osteocyte the function of this osteocytes is that it will maintain what the bone mattress it will maintain the bone mattress and through further intramembranous ossification there will, there will be the formation of these structures here called specules specules these specules will be formed and these specules will form around what bone vessels they will form around bone vessels so when they form around bone vessels it will give them this characteristic structure you understand and this characteristic structure is what we call the spongy bone you see there are spaces and we need the spaces are what blood vessels and this is what we call it uh, trabeculae the trabeculae these things are what we call the trabeculae and this represents what the spongy bone during bone remodeling, during bone remodeling, let me underline it. The osteocytes at the edges of what this spongy bone will now rearrange themselves into more tightly packed structure called osteon. Called what osteon, and this osteon is what will lead to the formation of what the compact bone at the edges of what the spongy bone. So there will be the formation of compact bone at the edges of what the spongy bone. You see, the osteocytes at the edges of the spongy bone will rearrange themselves into a tightly packed what structure called osteon, and this will lead to the formation of what the compact bone at the edges. So there will be compact bone, spongy bone, and compact bone, and this is the this is a characteristic representation of what a flat bone, how flat bones, how the compact bone and spongy bones have been arranged. There is a compact bone, spongy bone, and what a compact bone. You understand and that will be for what intramembranous what ossification and sometimes during bone remodeling the inside where the spongy bones are being found can be filled with something we call medullary cavity can be filled with a space there will be a hollow space called what medullary cavity and this medullary ca cavity houses either red bone marrow or what a uh, yellow bone marrow red bone marrow for infants and yellow bone marrow for what adults you understand so that's for intramembranous what ossification so guys so let's look at this topic here too called the endochondral ossification 
Unlike the intramembranous ossification which develop from what? Mesenchymal stem cells. This endochondral ossification will develop from what? Cartilage. You understand? They will develop from what? Cartilage. To be precise, a hyaline cartilage. A hyaline cartilage. Now, the question is why hyaline cartilage? Hyaline cartilage because the mitosis of this cartilage is very rapid. It's very rapid. And also, this hyaline cartilage is flexible which helps in what bone development that's why we are using hyaline cartilage and this endochondral ossification leads or results in the formation of bones like long bones long bones except the clavicle clavicle is a long bone but doesn't undergo what endochondral what ossification but rather what intramembranous ossification mostly let me say mostly so now the question is what are the stages of this endochondral ossification so let's look at it there is a cartilage hyaline cartilage and this hyaline cartilage is being surrounded by this structure called the perichondron the perichondron so this structure here is called the perichondron and this perichondron is being made up of dense irregular what connective tissue dense irregular what connective tissue this perichondron they are being supplied with nutrients by these blood vessels you understand they are being supplied with nutrients by these blood vessels by during bone formation during bone formation these blood vessels will supply the perichondron with what? Osteogenic cells. Osteogenic cells, which are the stem cells for what? Boom. You understand? So these osteogenic cells, you know what will happen? They will differentiate into what? Osteoblast. From osteoblast, this osteoblast will secrete what we call the osteoid, which is the uncastified bone matrix, which will be calcified. And the osteoblast will differentiate into what? Osteocytes, which will maintain the bone matrix. So it will lead to the formation of what? A bone tissue at what? The perichondral area. So the perichondral area will become what? Bony. And they will form what? The bone collar. The bone collar. But let's look at something here. This is a cartilage. And obviously, it will contain what? Cells called what? The chondrocytes. And these chondrocytes, they sit in these spaces we call the lacuna. And initially, they were doing their thing. And they were being supplied with nutrients by blood vessels. But this is the case that now there is the formation of this bone collar, which will seize the supply of what nutrients by what these blood vessels to the what to the chondrocytes. So these chondrocytes they are not receiving nutrients. And guess what will happen? They will die. When they die, they will expand. When they die, they expand. And become what calcified. But this is the case that nature doesn't want this to what to be there. Nature doesn't want this dead chondrocytes to be there you understand so there there will be the invasion of what uh, this cartilage by this thing we call the periosteal bud so the cartilage they will be invaded by this blood vessel called what the periosteal bud i call it zoom lion because this periosteal bud will supply the cartilage where the where the dead cartilages are being found it will supply that area with what two cells which is the osteoclast and we know what osteoclast they do they break down what bone and this osteoclast here what they will do is that they will remove these dead what cartilages you understand dead chondrocytes let me say it in that way they will remove these dead chondrocytes and the periosteal bud will also supply the cartilage with what they cell called the osteoblast and we know that they are the bone forming cells so this osteoblast when the osteoclast remove the dead what chondrocytes the osteoblast will what deposit what new bone tissue especially specifically the spongy bone so the osteoblast will deposit what spongy bone whilst the osteoclast will be removing what the dead chondrocytes and through that you know, this part will become what bony and this whole process is what we call the ossification and where this ossification is occurring is what we call the what ossification what center ossification center and this the first ossification center being formed so we call it the primary ossification what center so after the diaphysis part of this long bone has been filled with what spongy bone there will be the formation of secondary ossification what sites or center at what at the uh, at the epiphysis sites you understand so this secondary ossification center being formed here another one being formed here and this part will be invaded by blood vessels blood vessels will supply this part with what osteogenic cells and you know what will happen which will lead to the what formation of what a bony tissue and specifically spongy bone so spongy bones will also be formed here understand and also during bone bone remodeling during bone during bone remodeling bone remodeling 
this uh, spongy bone sites can be replaced by what a medullary cavity can be replaced by what a medullary what cavity which actually houses the yellow or red bone marrow you understand yeah so that's it the only place that will remain on bony is what the uh, covering of this part called the articular cartilage it will remain cartilage you understand it will remain cartilaginous you understand let me say it that way the articular cartilage so this is what endochondral what ossification thanks guys